You're listening to the Health and Happiness Podcast with Travis Kemper and Lauren Maxwell. Each episode, we share easy to implement strategies to improve your health, happiness, and overall quality of life. If you win the morning, you win the day. Tim Ferriss. How's it going, Travis? Busy as usual, but great. I went to Tahoe last weekend for an amazing personal and professional development retreat. Um, This weekend... I was camping with Duke and Julia and Duke ran around like a nut job all weekend and has not moved since we got home. Wow. He is like dead to the world. So that's awesome. <laughs> um, we also, it was a ridiculously beautiful area and we saw tons of deer. We saw a herd of 80 elk and yeah. It was, it was a good day. It was 80 a good elk. That's so yeah. cool. That's an approximate. They were running away from me. So, I um, mean, you showed they, me the picture. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And that didn't get them all. They yeah. like, couldn't all fit in the screen. That's so cool. Yeah, it was very cool. Um, and if you're following me on Facebook, you know that for the first time in my adult life, I have a full set of boxers and a full set of socks without holes in them. <laughs> so it was a huge week for me. Yay! Oh Lauren. my god, that's a big <laughs> deal. <laughs> um, it's going good for me. I've been busy with summers, summer groups and prepping for school to start already because my schools start the first week of August and I don't know how that came up so fast, but nevertheless, we proceed forward. Um, Football season's coming too. <laughs> crazy. Um, I did go to see my first live in-person theater show this weekend. Um, All right. for a date night with my husband. It was the first one that I've been to, and I don't even know how long. Um, the Fla- so Flagstaff is having a Shakespeare festival, so obviously there were like a couple of Shakespeare plays going on, and we got to see the Midsummer Night's Dream, which is my favorite Shakespeare play. And yes, I am a nerd for anybody who is listening. Um, I love Shakespeare, and that was so much fun. We like laughed our heads off. It's one of his comedies, if you don't know. Um, it's really funny. Also, sleep update. Yeah, I know. That's why I said it. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. Thanks for the education. (laughs) Sleep update for anybody who has been wanting to know how my sleep has been going since I was struggling for a long time. I finally had my first like night this week of actual like full sleep. I have a very specific night routine that I've been well redoing since my husband went to start working at night. Um, I had one before, but now it's different, obviously, because he's not here. And I've been so like committed and working so hard to try to like sleep (laughs) Um, that it finally actually worked this week for the, it was like Thursday night. It was like the last night that he was working this week. And I was like sitting on the couch doing my like normal night routine stuff. And then all of a sudden, like my eyes were closing and I started to fall asleep. And then I got super excited because I was about to fall asleep. And then I had to call myself back down and I like went straight to bed and I fell asleep. And from the moment I hit my pillow to the moment my alarm went off in the morning, I was asleep. Major awesome. success. <laughs> that's, that's huge. Congratulations. Thanks. I'm pretty stoked about it. <laughs> I bet. It feels good. Um, gives you a lot more energy to do things during the day. Yeah. Anyway, so what are we going to talk about today, Travis? Well, I got a text from a patient this week that was unexpected. Um, I was seeing her months and months ago over the winter, and we discharged early due to tremendous progress. Um, She randomly texted me out of the blue, said she was excited to be moving rooms. She lives in a senior living facility. And when I realized who it was, because I don't save my short-term patients numbers into my phone. Um, I got super excited to hear from her and she inspired this episode. So this patient was on and off of our services for years before I saw her. When I met her, she was extremely depressed and her functional abilities continued to decline. I spent the first two days with her doing almost nothing except planning and strategizing to get out of her funk. With some probing, I found out that when she was working, she used to have this very well-defined morning routine. After two weeks of encouraging her to do the morning routine, um, just a couple real quick, easy things, she was a different human being. Wow. Her her morning routine consisted of 
praying, exercising, and reading. Um, and as soon as she, as I got her to do that again, first thing in the morning, don't look at your phone, just do pray, exercise, read. Um, she was a completely new person. You wouldn't even have recognized her. Oh my gosh. And then her strength increased, her back pain went away, um, with some exercises that we did. And it was just amazing. So I discharged her early. I discharged her outpatient therapy where she had been seeing my wife's boss for years, approximately a decade. And she named one of her exercises after me, one of her morning routine exercises and showed it to him. <clears throat> and um, she gave him permission to, to let me know how she was doing. And uh, he told me that in the 10 years that he's seen her, he has never seen her this good so oh my gosh because, yeah so it was all because you know a positive influence whatever it was mostly because we got her on this structured morning routine and then she continued to do this morning routine after we discharged so today let's talk about morning routines wow what an inspiring story nice work travis um it was fun as if you need another reason to set a morning routine other than what Travis just said, here are some other reasons to set a morning routine. It can help you feel physically and emotionally better as opposed to not having a morning routine and rushing off to work and already starting your day off with stress and just continuing to be stressed day in and day out that can catch up with you physically. Um, it can also improve your relationships. So as we start building a morning routine that allows us to feel more confident, productive, and resilient, we might find that our relationships feel closer, more connected, and positive as well, rather than, again, if you're rushing off to work, feeling stressed, going to work, and continuing to feel stressed, coming home, and taking it out on your spouse because they're the ones around. Having or taking it out as you or taking it out as you walk through the door right like yeah you're, you're in my way because i'm in such a rush i can't wait for you to get out of the bathroom or yeah. out of the refrigerator right exactly so having a morning routine can reduce all of those things happening and improve your relationships um it can also increase productivity it sets the tone for the day allowing us to control our schedules rather than let our schedules control us it can improve confidence. Um, having a morning routine helps to set the stage for better prioritizing, more effective time management, and greater productivity. All of this, in turn, is likely to have a positive effect on our self-efficacy. It could also lead to a state of increased peace. A solid, consistent morning routine can offer us a time to practice intentional mindfulness or prayer, which can lead to feelings of greater peace as we go through our day. And feeling more productive during the day can help us be more peaceful at night and rest better. So it is a positive feedback loop. It comes full circle, it just circles around. <laughs> so how do we build a morning routine that is that can help us do all of these things and get all these benefits, Travis? So first thing is to this is the one that's hard for me. Set a reasonable and specific time to wake up every day and don't hit the snooze button. Like that's the hardest one for me that's is not hitting so the snooze hard. button. That's so hard. Yeah, a guilty, guilty, guilty. Yeah, yeah like, like everything we read, every single article, if it didn't say anything else, it said don't hit the snooze button. <laughs> everything. Yeah, that eight minutes extra does not uh, actually improve your uh, quality of life, yeah. believe it or not. Um, ideally, you give your morning routine 30 to 90 minutes. Um, I will preface this, with, preface probably isn't the right word, but I will, I will make a note on this though. Whatever you can give yeah. to start your day more organized and try to do it, it's great. Like, I don't care if all you do is 10 push ups in the morning or five mm -hmm. push ups or a push up to, to start. And then you slowly build from there. Um, most things recommend you move your body, you fuel properly and hydrate um, water, not coffee as we'll go into mm -hmm. um, review your day, jot down your goals for the day, 
make your bed. That's a common one that I may or may not do. Uh, soak up some sun if you can. Um, generally when I get up, the sun's not up. It's too early uh, for me to. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, soak up some sun. That tells your body it's time to start the day. Sunshine has tons of benefits. Um, and meditate. So Lauren, there's a shocking lack of research here. Kind of like on our last episode, the post-graduation mm-hmm. depression, post-retirement depression, tons of anecdotes, tons of, of um, you know, articles written about it, no research, which yeah. is interesting. But what is researched is the benefits of the things in the morning routines that people are recommending. So kind of, we have some research. Yeah. And one thing I specifically found interesting um, as a coffee drinker is like Travis said, coffee might not be the best thing to drink first thing in the morning. Well, okay. Maybe I should rephrase that because maybe it's not the best thing to drink at all, but also (laughs) the best time to drink coffee might not be first thing in the morning if you're looking for like a pick me up. Um, But actually an hour after you wake up, because research is showing that in the hour or as you first wake up, your body's production of cortisol is at what is at one of its three daily peaks. Um, and consuming caffeine while our bodies are already at peak cortisol production teaches the body to produce less cortisol, which makes you feel more tired, which makes you drink more coffee, which is a negative feedback loop. <laughs> totally makes you dependent. So instead of drinking coffee, hydrate with water. Start with water. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I'm doing good, I usually have 72 ounces of water down before my first patient at nine o'clock. Um, that's awesome. It's at least 48 minimum. Yeah. That's awesome. And it is a huge pick me up first thing in the morning. Yeah. I've started drinking a lot more water first thing in the morning for sure, but I definitely did not know the thing about coffee. Um, I'm happy to know that now. <laughs> So exercise is almost always recommended in a morning routine. Um, the benefits of exercise, I mean, we went over them in episode two, I think it was. So if you are not sold that exercise is something you really want to do, you should probably go back and listen to episode two. And just a l- short summary of benefits of exercise helps you control your weight, prevention and management of virtually all diseases improves mood, prevents the um, dementia, boosts energy, promotes better sleep, and it makes you smarter. Um, tons of studies with students taking tests after exercise versus not taking tests after exercise or taking tests without exercising prior to it, it's specifically cardio exercise. And they all conclude that it has a positive benefit on your test results. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, We also found an article that was talking about specifically the benefits of morning exercise in comparison with afternoon or evening exercise. Um, So studies have found that aerobic exercise performed in the morning causes a significantly higher reduction in nocturnal systolic blood pressure as compared to exercise conducted in the afternoon or evening. Also, morning exercise is associated with higher duration of deep sleep at nighttime, which is super beneficial to people who don't sleep very well. Um, It has been found that it also causes significantly lower rate of hypoglycemia and improved metabolic control and causes maximum cellular oxygen consumption and higher revitalizing effects as compared to exercising in the evening. However, all of that being said, the best time to work out is the time that you can consistently work out. If you're not a morning person, or if you're like me and you're getting up super early in the morning, um, I have to work two and a half hours away on some days of my work. So I'm already getting up at 3.30 and don't really want to wake up any earlier than that. Um, So morning workouts may not be plausible or favorable or even motivating for people. Do not let that be a barrier or an excuse to not moving your body. Work out when you can work out. There are benefits to both. <laughs> Agreed. Um, 
Some other parts of your morning routine could include doing things like journaling or reading, as these have been shown to have some great benefits. Um, journaling, benefits of journaling, manage anxiety, reduce stress, cope with depression, prioritize your problems, fears, and concerns, tracking any symptoms day to day um, so that you can recognize triggers and learn ways to better control them. I used to do this at night. I used to track my days. Like I would just rate on a scale of one to 10, my happiness level, my productivity level, um, a couple other things. I should start doing this again. Yeah, I did um, a lot. I do a lot of my journaling at night, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to journal anytime. But this, I do it in the morning as part of my morning routine as we'll go over later. Um, it also provides an opportunity for positive self-talk and identify, identifying negative thoughts and behaviors. Lauren, how do you start journaling? I love journaling. Um, try to write every day. Like, try to make it a part of your morning routine. Make it consistent. Set aside a few minutes every day to write. This will help with writing in your journal regularly. Make it easy for yourself. Keep a pen and paper handy at all times or keep it where you're going to be when you do your morning routine. Um, that way, when you have thoughts you want to write down, you can. Um, you could also do it on your computer. I wouldn't recommend that because less screen time in the morning or at night or whenever you're doing it is always better. Um, also, I just think there's something so special about like actually physically writing something down. It just like, it's more visceral to me. It feels so much better. But well, maybe we'll that's and, just me. <laughs> yeah, we'll look and see if there's any research on that, or if it's better to journal well, be pen and paper or, uh, yeah, on the computer yeah. um, when we actually do our journaling episode, which is coming up sometime in the near future. We'll Yay! See. I will love that episode. Um, yeah, that would be really interesting to see. Other tips are write or draw whatever feels right and use your journal as you see fit. I think this is a really important one. I've found um, your journal doesn't need to follow a structure. It's your own private place to discuss and create whatever you want in whatever way you want to express your feelings. Um, personally, I share like most of my life with other people, at least people who are close to me, but my journals are not for other people to read. I don't think I've shared a single journal with another person because it is really like such a sacred space for me. It's the like place where I can be really honest and really like vulnerable and be really like, I don't know, free to express how I feel. And if I show other people, like even once it feels like when I go to write, it feels like performative and like a performance. And I like, it never should feel that way. It should be for you. Yeah. I like that. Use your journal as you see fit. I have journals that are guided, um, that oh, I use. Cool. And I, and I also just have a journal and there's no words in it other than what journal. I wrote. Yeah. yeah. So I just write whatever comes to mind that day sometimes. Um, and sometimes I do it both. And sometimes I do one or the other, uh, depends. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, another one that they recommend is reading. And I feel like we shouldn't have to go over the benefits of reading, but just in case you are a non-reader, like I used to be, um, here are some benefits of reading for you. <laughs> it strengthens your brain. It increases your ability to empathize. It, it allows you to experience new experiences, um, yes. things that are completely different from your life. Um, build your vocabulary helps prevent age-related cognitive decline, reduces stress, prepares you for a good night's rest, and helps alleviate depression symptoms. Um, you can also learn a ton from reading. I typically yeah. only read nonfiction books unless they're named Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> nonfiction, right? Yeah, that always screws with me. Yeah, that's nonfiction. I don't like that that stories based on true things are called non. I know. I always thought that was really weird too. It bothers me. Yeah. But anyway, so I, I probably read 95% nonfiction. I have Harry Potter and then one other author that I read. Um, anyway, also Lauren found this, this little tidbit for me. Um, reading may even help you live longer because Lauren knows I love to talk about longevity. Uh, <laughs> there is a long-term health and retirement study that followed a co cohort of 3,635 adult participants for a period of 12 years. Those who didn't read or who read magazines and other forms of media 
survived around two years less than people who read books. That's a lot. That's a lot just by reading books. Yeah. Um, and in case anybody is wondering, um, as far as retention, at least, uh, audiobooks in the, ev- in the uh, evidence that we have, audiobooks you retain just as well as reading written books. So I do a lot of audiobooks as well. That's awesome. Um, yeah, plus they're really easy to fit into your day. If yeah, you have definitely. A yeah. Um, the study also concluded that people who read more than three and a half hours every week were 23% likely to live longer than those who didn't read at all. Pretty cool, if you ask me. Open a book. <laughs> read a book. Reading Rainbow. <laughs> oh my gosh, blast from the past. I, used I know, to watch open that a book. A he <gasps> said that something like that in the song. Yeah, I don't it, know. All I remember was. It. Yeah. Let's good. take a look in a book. It's reading rainbow. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you so much. You graced us all with that singing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's also meditation um, that has obviously been researched a ton. We have a whole episode on it. If you need more information, feel free to go listen to that episode. Um, But the one we wanted to mention here is specifically related to athlete performance. Um, And so they had a study where athletes meditated and it showed increases in benefits in lots of things. So increase in self-awareness, improvements in mental attitude, increased likelihood of reaching flow state, increase in sports specific performance, better focus on the task at hand and improved ability to deal with failure. And we wanted to bring that up because if athletes per- improve performance with meditation, it seems likely that our performance would also pre- improve with meditation. If, I would if think so. If it works for athletes, it probably works for us. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. So Lauren, what's your morning routine look like? So I don't have a very set morning routine. Actually, I have a much more in detail evening okay. routine, but my morning routine currently is, um, I would actually, I have so many ideas now that we've done this episode of like what else I could do in the morning. <laughs> but Lauren, another way to ask this question is, Lauren, what are you going to make your morning routine look like, especially on those days where you don't have to get up at 3.30? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to put, <laughs> I want to put journaling in there for sure, because journaling is my favorite and also like the best thing ever. Um I exercise in the morning right now, especially because I don't have to wake up at 3.30. So on days that I don't have to wake up at 3.30, that'll probably be part of my normal routine. Um, I feel like everybody that starts exercising, if they continue it for years, they eventually become a morning exercise. Yeah. Only time of the day that is absolutely yours. I totally would agree with that. If you don't have to wake up at 3.30 in the morning, yes. <laughs> yes, um, that is why my routine has shifted during this time is because it's, yeah, I wake up before everybody else and it's great and I can do my workout in peace um, and my dog is sleeping and that's a major part of it now. <laughs> my dog yeah. is asleep. Um, I also want to start listening to audiobooks more on my long commutes. I think that should be part of like, because I have two and a half hour commutes, I usually listen to music, but like, Travis, you just gave me a great point of like, I should be listening to audiobooks that could at least be like a little bit of my commute, if not a lot of my commute, since I drive so much. Um, I listen to almost no music anymore, other than at the gym. And it's, it's amazing. Like the amount of, the amount of learning you can pack into a day when you're driving, um, through audiobooks and podcasts is incredible. So yeah. I utilize them a lot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then the other part of my normal morning routine right now is I walk my dog, which is like, right now I'm getting sunlight, um, when I walk my dog in the morning, but that's not going to be the case when I wake up at three thirty. So <laughs> Or when, or when the winter comes around. Yes. Yeah. I think I, what'll probably work best for me. Cause now that I'm like thinking out loud about it, like I'll have probably two different morning routines. One, when I have to wake up at three 30 in the morning and like, it's going to be a condensed routine or like more audiobooks during my drive. And then yeah. there's ones where I can like wake up at the same time because that's part of it is waking up at the same time every day. And then look how much time I have to do a morning routine when I don't actually have to drive two and a half hours. 
Awesome. So many ideas. What is your morning routine, Travis? <laughs> well, when I'm at the top of my game, I am not perfect, but when I'm what? at the top of my game, I know <laughs> it's a surprise to a lot of people. Um, I would say I'm 75% minimum. Um, whenever I get new stresses, I, I get off of it a little bit, like after we purchase these houses and getting them ready and stuff yeah. like that. I got off my morning routine. Um, I never miss exercise in the morning. Uh, I really think that's a true story. Uh, I true don't, story. I don't know the last time I missed exercise in the morning. So that is a given for the last you know 15 years or whatever. Um, but I read, I meditate, I journal, I plan my day, um, and I spend some time brainstorming ideas for my business or this podcast. Um, that's where all my crazy ideas that get dumped on you. <laughs> this is that's all awesome. from my morning routine. Yeah. That's so awesome. How long does your morning routine take? Uh, it depends on the day. Um, it depends what my work day looks like. I get all those things in, but I don't always take the same amount of time. Mm. Um, so it depends on life situations, but I would say, well, if you include the exercising, it's longer. Yeah. The reading, meditating, journaling, journaling, planning my day and working on brainstorming for my business or podcast is, is easily an hour. Um, if you include the exercise and that's another 45 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So. Well, like Travis said, start with what you can. You don't have yes. to be like Travis and do like two hours right at the start. Like you could build up to that, make that a goal. <gasps> Goal setting. We're back to goal setting. But anyway, start with like five minutes. If all you have is five minutes, start somewhere. Start with five push-ups. Whatever yeah. you want to do. Yeah. So Lauren, what's the challenge for this week? Challenge for this week is to start your day with a sense of purpose and organization. Add something that you want to do every day into your morning routine before checking your phone or computer. I have so I many things that I want to add. So I, I be love this challenge. the before checking your phone or computer, by the way. Ah, uh, yes. Anything that happens on that phone or computer will still be there after you take the time for yourself in the morning to set your day up right. Fill your own cup. We have an episode on that too. I don't know where it was somewhere recently that I talk about filling your own cup first. Yeah, right we talked about self-care. That's right. That. Yes. Awesome. Lauren, you got anything to add? I don't think so. <laughs> well, this was fun. Thanks, was everybody. Fun. <laughs> and we will see you next week for see another episode. Bye. Bye. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to listen to this episode of the Health and Happiness Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode and are getting benefits from our content. If your life is improving in part due to the information in this podcast, we would greatly appreciate you sharing the episode with your family and friends on social media and leaving us a review so we can continue to reach more people and improve the health and happiness of the community at large. Thanks again, and we will see you next week for another episode of the Health and Happiness Podcast.